In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make some really cute styles of t-shirt scarves. Well, if you wanna learn how to make them, well then follow me. What's up, Glue Dots? I'm Elaine, the Midnight Crafter. The craft I have for you tonight is some random different t-shirt scarves. There's so many different styles out there that can be made, and I'm gonna show you a few of them. And you know what's great about this project? You can buy t-shirts from Dollar Tree, you can buy them from Goodwill, or you can even recycle old ones that you have at home that you don't use anymore. Patterned ones, solid colored ones, doesn't matter. They all make really unique and interesting looks. So I'm really excited I'm going to show you this project and I've been wanting to do it for a really long time, so I'm looking forward to it. But before I get to it, I would love it if you join our Glue Dot family by hitting that subscribe button right there down below and make sure you hit that bell next to it so it lets you know when I upload new videos. Also, if you're enjoying my videos, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment because it's always so nice to hear from you. Also, don't forget to look down in that description box. There's great information down there. There's also a link where you can enter to win a really cute little bling owl keychain and I do that drawing the first of every month. Also, my contact information is down there and some of the items that you'll be needing for this project are listed there below as well. There's gonna be a link for Natalie at Totally Dazzled where I get the brooch that I'm gonna show embellishing one of the scarves at the end and she has amazing items over there if you're a bling girl or guy. So anyway, don't forget to check that out too. So let's stop talking and let's get cutting. You ready? Let's do it. So the first scarf I'm gonna show you is pretty simple. It's probably the easiest one. Now I'm using youth t-shirts because this is what I found at Dollar Tree and these are actually gonna make very small scarves. So if you want a larger one, I highly recommend doing uh, men's extra large t-shirts because those will give you the most fabric and the most length on your scarves. So the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna just take this little T here and we're gonna cut it off right below the armpits, all the way across to the other side. And your cuts do not have to be perfect. This is a super forgiving project. And we're gonna set this aside. You never know what you can use this for and we may be using a little piece of it later. The next thing we're gonna be doing is cutting off this hem here at the bottom. So we want both ends to have a raw edge to them. It's very helpful to have good sharp scissors. If you have fabric scissors that are really just used for fabric, it, it makes it so much easier. But the easiest thing is if you have a rotary cutter because you can just slide right on through and cut and it's super, super fast. We're gonna go through now and we're just gonna make cuts about maybe like three quarters of an inch wide. And you're just gonna go all the way across your shirt, but you're not gonna cut through the other side. So you can see where I stop. Now we're just gonna keep doing that, super simple, and going all the way across. Whoop, I got a little bit narrow there, but it's okay, again, it's a very forgiving project. And then just go until you have gone all the way across your t-shirt. So this is what it looks like, and you can see, obviously, this one's thicker, this one's thinner, it's really not a big deal. But this is how it is when they're all cut. So the next thing you're gonna do is carefully go through and just to stretch each one of these loops. And as you do that, you'll see that it makes a nice little rounded kind of like a rope almost. Here's what they look like, my little noodles. They look like oodles of noodles. <laughs> so now what we're gonna be doing is taking, we're gonna go back to our little t-shirt here that we had and gonna go ahead and use part of the sleeve in order to create the little piece that's gonna put this all together. So we're gonna cut the hem off from the sleeve. Then you're gonna cut a strip about the same width as the strips you cut here to make your noodles. And we're gonna pull on this. Well, that was where the seam was, so that's fine. I was gonna say that if you can find t-shirts without side seams, that is the best. Um, they work great. So all you're gonna do is take this piece now, stretch it out, and now we're gonna go back to this, open it up, and find the top part that we did not cut through. So you're just gonna kinda gather that up and then we're gonna use this piece here to tie it off. You can tie it off with that piece just like a knot 
and attach it that way. Or as I did on this one here, you can actually use the wider portion of the sleeve, that little hem that we cut off, if you like a little wider look. Another option would be to cut another strip of your t-shirt and make one more noodle. And we're going to tie it right here in a little knot kind of towards the one side of our area here. And then you're gonna go around and around to kind of add some interest to this area here. Then once you do that, you can either, if you'd like to, you can use your glue gun to seal that off or you can just tie it off. You will have a little knot showing, but it's not too bad of a knot. If you'd like to, you can secure it with your glue gun or you can just put, push some of this piece in through underneath using, I'm just gonna use my scissors, but if you have something else, a pen or something you wanna use, and I'm just gonna cut my excess piece off there. And here we have our first scarf. This is super cute. I'm gonna show you these all in the end in different ways, how I um, stylize them and wear them. There's some, gonna be some really cool options you can add little clips to them or some even an earring as a decorative piece if you'd like. Right. Moving on to our next scarf. I have for this one, I'm because I'm using youth t-shirts, I'm gonna be using three different t-shirts. You can do three of the same color, three different colors that are coordinating, but if you use an extra large t-shirt, you won't have this issue. So what I'm gonna be doing here is cutting out some big circles. Now, depending on the size of your circle will indicate how long your scarf is. This is gonna be kind of a spiral scarf. So I would say a minimum of about an eight inch circle, which for me, that's, I don't know, somewhere in the ballpark of a one wide finger spread from pinky to thumb. First, so I mean, you wanna make sure so that you can use all of your fabric, make sure it all lines up nicely. Go ahead and spread that out first. And then if you'd like to use a template, you can use a plate. There's different size plates, which will give you different lengths of your scarf. The smaller the plate, the shorter the scarf. I would like my scarf to be pretty long, so I'm gonna be using one of these Dollar Tree glass plates. Just make sure that you don't leave any of the hem within the circle. And then you're gonna go ahead and just trace that out so you have your line to cut on. Looks like I'm gonna be able to get two circles out of this t-shirt. So I have my two circles marked on here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out. So remember it's gonna be, this is two layers. So I'm gonna have two and two, four circles from just this t-shirt. I may not use all three of the shirts that I thought I was originally gonna use for this because this one actually was a little bigger than I expected. So here are my four circles, two and two. So the next thing I'm gonna do is do this, the same thing with this gray t-shirt, but you can see this one is actually smaller for the size plate that I'm using. So I'm only gonna be able to get one circle cut out of this, which will make two since it's the two layers of the fabric. But I'm gonna make sure that you guys, if you wanna use this extra part for anything, go ahead and cut your circle up as far towards the top as you can so that you have this extra fabric to potentially even make another scarf with. So here I have my two dark gray circles and here I have my four turquoise circles. And what we're gonna be doing, the next part is super easy. What I'm actually gonna do just to make it easier to cut, instead of cutting each one individually, I'm gonna do three at a time. So just gonna move one of those over to the gray side to the dark side. <sighs> Luke, I am your father. All right, so what we're gonna be doing now, and this is gonna be dependent on how your scarf ruffles. We're gonna be just cutting around and around and around in a, like a spiral. You can choose how thick or thin you want to do this and two things. If you go thinner, you will obviously have a smaller ruffle and it will be longer, but we chose a big plate so that we could have the option of going with a little bit thicker cut and a little wider ruffle. So I'm gonna go, you start here on the side and I'm actually gonna go so that my ruffle or my spacing is roughly an inch and a half to two inches. So um, your first two knuckles is a good indicator uh, of what I'm doing. Now you don't have to do that, but you can do whatever size you want and just keep that spacing as you go all the way around.
And here I am at the end. So you can already see how this started to get a ruffle effect when it's hanging, it's gonna have that. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to this piece as well. So here, these are all cut in our spiral and ready to go. The next thing we're gonna do is go back and get a little piece of our scrap fabric and we're gonna just cut a piece that we can use to tie this all together. And it doesn't really matter how long, you just need enough to be able to work with. And then we're gonna go to the part of our spiral that we cut, that is this end part. It looks like the head of the snake, right? Just like that. We're gonna go to that part, fold it in half, and make a little slit there to make a hole through all of our pieces. Just like this. You don't want the cut to be too close to the edge because you don't want it to tear through. But we want that hole. So the next thing, we have our two pieces here. I have my two grays over here. I'm gonna put the gray on the inside. You can layer these however you want. Just try to break up the colors a little bit on it. And go ahead and layer all those. So what I did is turquoise, gray, turquoise, turquoise, gray, turquoise. Blah, 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 blah. Easy for me to say, right? Then take your little piece that you cut and put it through there. And we're gonna just tie these all together. And then go ahead and cut the excess off. Then you can go ahead and separate these all out from one another. And here we have our very cute second real fringy little scarf. For the next style, we're gonna be starting pretty much the same way we've done with our other shirts. Now these t-shirts don't have a side seam, which is ideal if you can find those. It's not a must, but it is definitely ideal. So also, patterned fabrics look really cool and they add a really nice effect. So for this one, we have our hemmed side and we have the side we just cut off. And we're gonna go through and we're gonna be cutting some fringes on this. Now there's two different styles of this exact shirt that we can make. I'm gonna show you the little more um, interesting and complex one because the other one goes without saying. So for the, the one that I'm gonna be showing you with, it's called sort of a macrame style, we're gonna need longer fringes. So at least your finger to pinky length, so several inches worth. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my masking tape across as a guide. And what we'll be doing is cutting our pieces. Now, you want them to be kind of narrower for this if you're doing the macrame style. If you're doing the other style, it's not gonna matter quite as much. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start cutting my fringes here. And for this one, I'm making my fringes a little less than a half inch. Now this one on the end seems narrow, but don't forget that's an end piece. So when it's opened up, it's actually gonna be about the same width as the other ones. Okay, now that all of our strips are cut, what we're gonna be doing is taking two pieces and we're gonna be tying them together in a knot. I'm gonna flip these up out of the way temporarily just so that you can see a little easier, but you are gonna to wanna to do all of these pieces as well. Okay, so you're gonna take your two end pieces and just tie them in the knot all the way up to the top. And do that with the next two pieces over and continue on tying the neighbors together. A quick little trick um, on tying knots, you can see right here how this knot kind of um, sticks up the way I tied it, and this one lays really flat. If you do want your knots to lay kind of flatter, what you're gonna do is tie your knot, start your knot the way you do, and then take note of which piece is up on the top. So this one is sticking up and this one's laying down. So you wanna make sure that that piece that's up already stays up. And then when you tie your knot, it will just lay a lot nicer. So just a little trick for you. Continue on tying them all and then we'll move on. Now we're gonna go through again and do the exact same thing, only we're gonna be tying the other two pieces together. Leave about an inch of space drop down. Oh my goodness, my dog is barking like crazy. There's somebody out there, probably the mailman. Okay, just <laughs> 
go through and do the exact same thing that you just did. Just leave a little bit of a drop down and go ahead and do this all the way across as well. And you do your other row too. Here's what we have so far with two rows of knots, the initial one and the second one. If you'd like, you can stop there. I'm gonna actually go one more row, taking again the center neighbors that are together and tying those, and this will be my last row. I kind of like the effect that it gives an extra little um, circle in there, or I don't know, circle, diamond, whatever. <laughs> This is also the reason that you want to make sure that your fringes initially are cut long enough because if they're too short, by the time you tie your knots in, you will only have little tiny stubs hanging down at the bottom. Now that we got all the knots tied, go ahead and peel off your tape. I actually decided to cut this hemline off on this scarf here because I really think it's gonna sit nicer on when we're wearing it. Then just go ahead and stretch it out and that edge will curl down just like the rest and you have your other scarf finished. What do you think? Should we do one more? Okay, so for this last one, I'm actually taking, so just so you guys can see, this is one of my husband's old grungy leftover white t-shirts. Um, I think it's like a medium or a large in men's. And I just wanna show you that you can make something equally as beautiful without having a brand new colorful shirt. So I'm gonna show you a technique I did to um, kind of change the color on this a little bit so you don't just have to have white. So follow me outside and we're gonna go ahead and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so I've simply laid out the white t-shirt just on a table and then I'm just taking my blue paint and spraying just to give this a little dusting of random color and it's really okay to have kind of blotchy spots because this is what's gonna actually give some dimension to our finished product and then you're gonna go ahead and flip the shirt over. I know there's a lot of shadows. I'm not sure how well you can see this, but you'll see it inside. Go ahead and flip the shirt over and do the same thing on the other side. And then what I like to do to help it to dry, it dries pretty fast. I just hit it with a hot blow dryer for a few minutes and it's good to go and we can start cutting. Okay, so we're gonna take this t-shirt now and do how we've done kind of for the basic cuts on the other shirts as well. And we're gonna cut it off under the armpits all the way across. And then again, we're gonna do the same thing and cut off the hem of this as well. So now that we have both ends clean, we're gonna go through and cut this exactly in half. At this point, you're gonna take one of the two pieces and we're gonna cut it into three. So into three equal parts because we're gonna be braiding this. And what we're gonna now be doing is cutting those in half as well, but from the ends, the folded ends. So basically you're gonna be making one really long strip. So now each one of these, when opened up, is really long, okay? Then we're gonna pull on those so that they roll up, and doesn't it figure mine is rolling so that all the blue is on the inside? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what I'm gonna have to do? I'm gonna run outside and give the backside of these a uh, spray as well. So there you go, another fabulous Elaine learn from my mistake lesson. <laughs> Be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I had a thought while I was out there spraying these that if you turn your t-shirt inside out first, I think it ends up curling like upwards. So if you turn it inside out, that should work. But anyway, just in case, if you'd like, just spray both sides. <laughs> so now I'm going ahead and pulling on these three pieces that I did and I'm making my little ropes out of them. And what we're gonna be doing is attaching them at the top. You can either tie them in a knot or if you wanna use a clothespin or something to hold them together at the top, that would work too, or a safety pin or whatever you have in mind. Attach those three at the top and then we're gonna go through and braid them. So I find just dangling this down so it's not resting on any surface helps you to be able to make a nicer braid and you have a little more control over the tightness of it because you don't need it really, really tight. And we are trying to keep those, um, this seam part underneath when we're braiding. So just go ahead and braid this whole piece all the way down. And then I'll show you how that incorporates into our next piece. 
So when you get to the end of your braid, just lay it nicely, braid down as far as you can. And then what I did is cut another little piece off of my leftover piece of t-shirt here. And I just made another little string so that I can tie this off with. You can use a bit of hot glue in there to hold those pieces together. And then you can just cut off your excess strings. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the other side as well and undo my knot here that I started with and finish the braid off nicely on that end so that both sides, both ends will be looking the same. If you wanna avoid having to untie this knot, just um, from the beginning, just go ahead and tie it, your three pieces together before you braid, just with a little string like that. Now don't worry so much about cutting this all the way off and exactly to the end because this part's gonna be covered up later. So we're gonna set aside our braid for right now and we're gonna go back to our other piece here. Now, a couple of options on this one. You can leave it whole as it is and stretch it out and just have it as a cowl and have the braid with the cowl. What I'm gonna be doing with this piece is cutting it into long strips like we did on our very first scarf. They don't need to be super narrow for this one. I'm doing them about an inch and a half. And go ahead and cut all the way up till about the last half inch. And I'm gonna cut all of this into the strips like we did on our first scarf. It's okay if your strips are not exactly the same width. It's just gonna add a little more texture and dimension to your scarf. So now what we're gonna do is like what we did on the other ones and stretch out our pieces. So now we have our braid and our little spaghettis. So up here at the top where our original pieces all came together and where they're attached, we're going to be adding in our braid. Okay, so now that we have this piece hot glued on there, what we're gonna be doing is stretching out our braid as much as possible because we want it to be, it's gonna be shorter than the rest of this, but we want it to be as close to that length as possible. And we're gonna go ahead and hot glue that end on as well. The next thing you're gonna do is just the same way we made these little noodles here by using some of your t-shirt that's left over. You're gonna make one more noodle and we're gonna be attaching it here to cover everything up. Again, either hot glue or, or tying it on, either way would be fine. I'm gonna hot glue it because I feel like it's just gonna give a little less bulk to it. I'm just gonna go ahead and start wrapping around to cover all of my knots and seams and all that good stuff. When you get to either where it's covered up or to enough of an area that you think looks good to you, cut off the excess and then we're gonna be adding a bit of hot glue in here and tucking that piece underneath the piece before it. This way you get a nice clean finished look and no extra pieces showing, no ends, no knots. So again, it's entirely up to you, but I really like using the hot glue for this. So we have our last scarf done and I'm gonna show you all of these. And by the way, don't forget, if you haven't hit that like button yet, then run on over there, run on over, go down, click it and give me some love guys.